This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Panda's Book, Zvezda's MiG-17, IBG's G and I-Class Destroyers, and Ryfield's VW Staff Car. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show where we take a look at the latest kits, books, tools, and more. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. We're glad you joined us. Let's get started with Panda's 135th scale 9A 310M1 Transporter Erector Launcher and Radar, or TELAR, with 9M 38M surface to air missiles. This modern Russian anti aircraft vehicle is a part of the book system, which can comprise several vehicles all mounted on a tracked chassis. The kit's hull consists of a lower half with weld seams, hatches, and suspension attachments that mates with the upper hull replete with more weld seams, nicely molded box lids on the sides, openings for engine and crew hatches, and rubber looking fender skirting. The rear panel is separate. The running gear features road wheel arms keyed for neutral alignment, optional dished or starfish pattern road wheels, idlers, drive sprockets, and return rollers. The tracks are individual metal links, think through a model stuff held together with pins that should be workable. Remaining hull detail includes hatches for the engine deck, as well as conduits and tools, toolboxes, and front hatches for crew, with clear inserts for the windshields, although it's not clear that the outer hatches can be posed open easily. The large rotating erector and launcher section comprises the underside with a clip-in mount, and the large upper section with sharply molded surface details, including hatches, welds, and more. The tracking radar, most of which is molded as a single part, fits on the turret's front. Many of the boxes on the sides feature separate hatches, although, as with the hull, there's no interior. Details such as handles, steps, retractable platforms, and railings are finely molded. The missile launcher builds from arms with rails that mount on brackets that fit into the rear of the turret with an antenna. Both can be posed raised or stowed with a piston system. Two types of missile are provided in halves with some fins separate, either four 9M317s or four 9M38Ms. All have one part nose cones and engine nozzles. Clear plastic is used for lights and periscopes, and there's a photo etched brass fret with engine screens, some brackets and plates, and a mask to paint the road wheels. Decals and color diagrams give markings for eight vehicles, mostly Russian, but there's one finish. This is a sharp looking kit of an interesting vehicle. From Zvezda, here's a 172nd scale MiG-17. This is a repop of Dragon's Fresco, which dates back 25 years, but it's still a nice kit and it builds into a good replica. It's also pretty simple, with all of the parts but two fitting on a single frame. Unlike the Dragon's Vesta MiG-15 Stablemate, the major parts are not marked by scores of recessed rivets. Rather, surface detail is restricted to fine panel lines and hatch boundaries. Petite rivets accent the few hatches and wing root fairings. The rear fuselage with molded closed speed brakes is in separate halves. The wing comes in upper halves with relatively thin wing fences molded on and lower sections. The control surfaces are molded with the upper halves, so the trailing edges are thin. There's a little wheel well detail included, and the inside of the gear doors has structural elements. The vertical stabilizer and the tail planes are single pieces. The underside of the nose is a single piece avoiding ugly filling with separate parts for the guns and their fairings. The intake ring caps the nose and blends with the short splitter. The small cockpit tub has detail molded on the side consoles and the instrument panel. Other detail here includes a three-part seat and control stick. The landing gear is basic but well molded with defined tires that should be easy to paint. Characteristic MIG fuel tanks with separate braces finish the build. Sharply printed decals give markings for four natural metal frescoes, one Soviet from the invasion of Czechoslovakia, and one each from North Vietnam, East Germany, and Cuba. The instructions have notes about each subject. Always welcome. If you're looking for a straightforward build, Zvezda's MIG-17 is just the ticket. IBG has produced a 1700 scale kit of a British two-funnel destroyer from World War II. A G-class ship in Polish service as ORP Garland. This waterline model's hull is a single part with molded portholes and eyebrow gutters. The deck is split into rear and forward sections with finely molded chains, bollards, and other fixtures. The superstructure sections have the same level of surface detail. The main armament, two 4.7 inch guns and their open back turrets are finely molded. The Garland's other guns are included on the photo etched metal fret along with railings, davits, funnel caps, stairs, and racks for plastic depth charges. Finally, there's a four tube torpedo launcher that will be mounted amidship. Other features of this kit include ship's boats and rafts, gun decks with detail underneath, fine masts, and other details. 
The marking diagram and small decal sheet gives markings and flags for the garland in 1944. And the instructions include a rigging diagram. IBG has also released an I-Class destroyer, HMS Ethereal, in 1-700 scale. As the real ships were related, it shares many parts with the Garland, including the hull and superstructure. The major changes are in the armament, with the Thuriel having four 4.7-inch guns and two rotating torpedo launchers. The color diagram shows the Ethereal in three-color camouflage in 1942. This is the first time these ships have been seen in injection molded plastic, and they should produce nice models. Lastly, let's take a look at Ryefield's 135th scale Volkswagen Type 82E. This German Army staff car mated the body of the Beetle with the chassis of the Kugelwagen, including the rear axle running through offset reduction gear. The less than 700 were built during World War II, and many served in North Africa and elsewhere. The main body comes in its own box for protection. It is beautifully molded with integral fenders, the split rear window, and engine vents. The hood, or engine cover, and front trunk lid are poseable. The latter reveals the fuel tank, jerry can, and a spare tire. At the other end is an engine bay with separate manifolds and belts. There's more engine detail under the floor pan, which is augmented by the single part rear suspension, transmission and drive axles, a multi-part exhaust system, center frame, and front suspension. Optional wheels include plastic rims with flexible vinyl tires and plastic wheels with balloon style sand tires. The interior has a detailed floor, seats with frames and leather look texture, dashboard, steering wheel, shifters, pedals, and rear view mirror. The bumpers look scale thin. The separate doors may be posable and have interior inserts with handles and window cranks. Clear plastic supplies thin windows as individual panes and there are optional open or blacked out headlights. A small photo etch fret includes military number plates and a Volkswagen logo I think goes on the dash. Decals and color diagrams on the back of the box have markings for three Type 82 E's. This looks like it will be an easy build. With simple modification, it should be possible to build it as a civilian version for post-war dioramas. Look for reviews of the book and VW in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can find more new products in the July issue as well as on sale at finescale.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Smarter Than I Look on TV. Is it your eyes or the it's long contacts? It's the contacts. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> context. <laughs> Go away. <laughs>